present and good afternoon to everyone that's here with us. We uh, gather here to celebrate the life of uh, our beloved brother Emmanuel. Um, when I got the leaflet, I'm saying we won't have the right person because from day one, honestly, all I knew was an asshole. So anytime I refer to you, said, okay, um, uh, I want something, okay, call El Paso for me, please. Uh, um, I never knew his name. And it's amazing, um, uh, we're told that at your marriage and at your death, people get to go to the and that's why I got to his name. <laughs> so we're here to celebrate his life, and um, uh, let's go stand, please. I will put the I would like to Paul Barrel come in, stand alongside the, the casket, and at the last stanza, um, I will beckon to you so you can come up. We shall do the song entitled, When the Road is Called Up Yonder, I'll Be There. And I'm hoping that on that day when that road is called,
Heavenly Father, this morning, this afternoon, we come to you asking you to show your favor upon us, asking you to glorify yourself, you are God. It is in you we live and move and have our being. We are here for a short time and very soon we shall be back to with you. We ask that you shall touch our hearts this morning, that we shall reflect on our own selves and that we shall make it. Yes, sir. 
Before he could say another word, I asked him, are you really serious with the job thing you said to me? He said, do you want to start now? That was the moment I realized he was serious. Oh, that day I shall never forget. It was a Friday and I wanted to sort out a few things, so I said to him, how about Monday? And right on the road, we struck a deal. 
I worked with his company in Mondido, and then he moved to Babono Hill 20. That's where I acquired a wealth of information and knowledge. He had such an impact on my personal life that timidness I suffered from had to bow, leaving its shadows behind, making room for a self-confident woman. Under the years of his supervision as an employee, taking up great interest in his business, he had great regard and respect for my input. And he seek to reward me in the simplest ways and in the extensive ones. I was quite amazed when I decided to open up my small business, a small business of my own. Upon breaking up the news to him, although still employed with the company, he supported this venture and continued, even when my business began expanding. The pressure between the two business, business, businesses coupled with health issues forced me to take a decision that I was not ready to, but I had to. I watched sadly as I threw in the towel, which I once used to wipe off the sweat that gave me my own business. That he never treated me differently while managing the two. Finally, it was official. Along with the remaining staff, to my surprise, of course, a great outing was planned. I was honored and celebrated, and a plaque for long de dedicated service was given to me. Over the years, we stayed in touch where I was called back to the company where I spent a further three years. And again, my health would not permit me to play the super girl. We continued to stay in touch where we'd sometimes lock horns as usual, but that was soon sorted out. During his illness, I constantly visited him at his home where we had each other's undivided attention. We laughed a lot, but somehow, discussion, deep stuff, always seems to be the cream of the crop. As he was a great interactor, so am I. During the period of his visit, during the period I visit, we stayed in touch over the phone and had long conversation. We agreed, we disagreed, but we maintained the friendship. He was a great businessman. The last message I received from him was Monday, the same day he passed. The same week he passed, sorry. I called, I messaged during that same week, and he wouldn't respond. And instantly I knew from, the, from deep within, he was not holding on the bar of optimism anymore. He was plunging. He would always pick up the phone the very minute he would see my call or message. But this time it didn't happen. I was preparing to visit him that morning Saturday. And while I was just about to make arrangements, I got a call saying that he had passed. El Paso, Emmanuel Prevo Mandi was a great mentor to me. And much of the knowledge I acquired as a result today, this is what I make a living from. As his body lies here, I have nothing to say to him. I gave him his flowers when he needed it the most. But for everyone here, I say to you, people make mistakes and stupid ones too. They hurt us in the process, but that does not give us the right to put away anyone because we hurt other people too. We make mistakes. We don't want to be put away. Our example should be Christ. He was, he was bruised for our iniquity, mistreated, spat on. All measure of thing was done to him. He was innocent, but he forgave. Let us forgive each other because we need 
Let us forgive others because we need forgiveness. We don't know the hour we might be called on, and we have to face the Almighty, our Creator. Let us right the wrong. I leave this with you. Think about it. Do the right thing. Matthew 6, 15, if we do not forgive, our Father in heaven will never forgive us. May the Spirit of God continue to lead us all into his truth. I thank you. COVID-19 have really changed up things. <laughs> okay, let's all stand, and we shall do this song entitled, To God Be the Glory. Thank you. 
see them? Okay, I don't know if in case I can follow what's written here, but we're supposed to have a eulogy. Is there a change? There's no change? Okay. Um, so who is doing the eulogy? Could you please? Yeah. Okay, come. Even the mic is nervous. <laughs> no, it's fine. Good afternoon, all. Okay. So, sometimes in our lives, certain people stepped in and you don't know the reason why. And Mr. Emmanuel Prevo Mande was such a man, and he touched many lives. Having arrived in St. Lucia at the tender age of seven from the uh, from French Guyana, Cayenne, he created um, wonders in the lives of many in throughout his, his life. Affectionately known as El Paso because of the business which he held, he ran after several other businesses which he had delved into. He was a proud and auspicious man, and he had a lot of reasons to be. He accomplished many in his lifetime, and as well, he assisted quite a few to do the same. He accomplished things that many people don't dream of accomplishing. At the age of seven, he arrived and could not speak a word of English. Quickly, at the age of 14, he was already teaching in the English language. including myself in the Babono community, in the in Babono Primary School. I remember him um, as a teacher and as a schoolmaster, not as a schoolmaster, sorry, but as a scoutmaster, which I was a member of the, of the scout in my tender years, my teenage years, and I, and I remember him and which would explain why that over the years, you know, where he acquired the discipline which he, he possessed. Okay, he was, he was that stern man. He was strong and everybody, you know, whom he touched their lives were impressed. Prevo was commonly known as, at the time, after he left teaching and left the, the scouting um, association, 
moved to work in sales for companies like JQ Charles, Dobole, and Company, Butler's Company, um, which afterwards, soon after he, he um, amassed the wealth of business that he decided to step into his own. His children and many who knew him in the Mondidon area would remember after he started his, his bus business with that, that special extraordinary sound of the horn. Madness was on the road and everybody knew because that bus was, it was flamboyant, you know, decorated. And everybody knows you just couldn't miss, miss um, fantastic madness. And he would design the bus with taste. The bus had special horn. The anticipation which came with that unmistakable tune of the horn in the bus will never be forgotten. His children look forward to cleaning the bus and scoring on the fallen treasures. El Paso touched many lives other than that of his children, relatives, and close friends. He gave himself up for country. That man, he loved himself, and he loved his country. I tell you that. He supported activities in his community, youth, youth activities. He sponsored sporting activities. and started many, many families to build their homes and small business startups by gathering them loans, granting them loans when they did not qualify for with advice to tell you how you should do it, how you could do it, how you can be successful. That was the kind of man he was. He was a God-fearing man and he loved his children in his own style. He did not want anyone's opinion on how to raise or love his children. From the experience of his older children, growing up with their father weren't easy, yet they agreed that he was the best father he knew how to be. There were times he was very proud of his children, and other times he was not. And I am quoting from his children. He was a perfectionist, and it showed in his daily life how he conducted his business and what he achieved in his lifetime. He was determined not to die poor, and of course not, that did not happen. He lived with his dreams through his death. He taught his children lessons in discipline which I mentioned earlier, which he, he picked up, developed for the scouting, and of course, you know, the many, many things, you know, many, as many disciplinary um, areas which he, he picked those up. He wanted his children to maximize their true potential as to any good, as any good parent would, and of course, they said they were lucky to have him as a father and a role model. El Paso wanted them to always do the right things, the right way, and set standards by which they should, ha by which they should behave, act, work, and live their, li their best lives. Even as adults, he still wanted to make decisions for them. His children were mesmerized by the way he did things. They describe him as a magician, or a telepathic at least, as he was the epitome of ambition. He saw what no one else could see and dream of big, dream big and made his dreams a reality. He achieved most of the things he intended to in life because he was a pillar of determination and perseverance. 
He was a visionary and never stopped hoping and dreaming, not even with death at his door. It, was a, it, it is no wonder he killed the, the scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Although El Paso did not teach my class at the Babono Primary School, he was my scoutmaster. When he took over from Mr. Leroy Seeley, who migrated to the US, I found him, I found him to be a scoutmaster who was a disciplinarian. He was stern, stubborn, very confident. He felt he was always right. And all of his friends, which he didn't have a whole lot of, at least not close friends, will tell you that El Paso, you, whenever you talk to him, you could, you could talk to him for an hour, but I can bet you that he would dominate that conversation. That's how much, you know, this man, he just loved to talk. He loved to impart wisdom. He loved to impart information. And no matter what, whatever you think, he knows more than you do. <laughs> I found him to be, um, yeah. as a native of Babono, I was always, I always knew Mr. Prevo as he made himself visible in the community from teacher to working as a salesman to running his own business, his own business which my family would patronize. For years, we did not have much interaction when I myself migrated to the US. However, whenever I returned on vacation, he would meet period, we would meet periodically, and by then, he was entrenched into politics. When El Paso failed at the, at, on seating Alan Buske, he started to influence me to run and support me through thick and thin, knowing how El Paso could sell ice to the Eskimo with, with his encouragement, I decided to make a go at it. I was not successful either. <laughs> but unlike my friend El Paso, I got back my deposit because, <laughs> because I got 1,000 votes. Prevo saw that as a, he saw that as a victory and took credit for the number of votes I got. That was my friend Prevo. When I actually returned to settle in St. Lucia to start my own business, we reconnected even closer because I was, I was in the block making business at this time and, then, and his hardware store was selling cement. So of course, I gave him all the sales. Our friendship grew stronger because with his, with his, influ, with his, his teacher influence, he was always encouraging me on how to do business. I then went into the cleaning business whilst he too started a computer company and IT services. I purchased computers for my business from him and, his, and he assisted me in the software to make my business transaction run smoothly. He was the one who trained me in use of computers which further strengthened our relationship by as businessmen and close friends. My friend El Paso was an avid businessman with ambitions to accumulate wealth by investing in properties and continuously expanded his business. He looked for any and every opportunity where there was a need to make business. Remember Tony was his ex-boss at, at Dubulis. So in the egotistic side, in his egotistic self, he now saw Tony as a businessman like him. He loved to associate himself with, a successful, with successful businessmen. He had other close business friends who he spoke about all the time. Everest, um, Everestus Jamari and Richard Jamari of Jamari and Sons, Pastor Emmanuel Charles. He, even though Pastor Charles 
and I, we are, we are related. But then he was the one who made the introduction because we did not quite know each other. So he made that introduction through, you know, just mentioning um, who I was and then um, how the relationship was. Former Attorney General um, Victor Lacobinier, one of his one of his very good friends, he would say, "Andre, in all my close friends, Garçon, you are my best friend. In all those guys, you are the only one who could come to my home at any time." Because I remember, I I arrived here late today, um, and. I'm almost late for everything, everywhere I go. And when Christmas time comes and I need to buy my drinks, it's not till after the store has closed. El Paso has to come and open his, his store so I can buy my drinks. <laughs> so that was the kind of friends that we were. And then he made sure that I was taken care of. Mind you, despite our long-term friendship and business association, we never ever once sat down to have a drink or a meal in a fancy restaurant anywhere. We spoke over the phone, and of course, I would be driving from Castries to Sufre, and the whole way through on that route, we would be talking, but then of course, whenever he start, he never stops, so I, will, I could never get a chance to put a word. So even though we never really um, had drinks together, of course he didn't drink, and he, we, never, we never went out socially, but I would call him at home, I would call him at business, he would sometimes visit my business, I would visit his business. And so were all his friends. He was never a social person, and of course, a man like, like that, then of course, as soon as he is, and your children will tell you that they were deprived of the social lives as well. Okay? All the sporting activities and so on and so on, that they were they were deprived because um, the father was turned and then he did not see the need and the benefit out of those. When it came to relationships, my friend Prevo had his own philosophy on the perfect woman he was looking for and never found. <laughs> he always had a complaint, and in his later years, he did not see it necessary to marry the chicks he had on his most, that he had his most recent children, his mother. He tried to impose this philosophy on me when I told him I was marrying my current wife. I asked him to be my best man, and he told me he does not like weddings, and, <laughs> and not him will marry again, and how he feel about women, and he went on and on. Though I was disappointed at the time, I just let him be because I would not influence, because he would not influence me in that one. About a few months after the wedding, he met my wife, whom he knew as friends of her, of her parents, and told her she is the best thing that happened to his friend. And he is so happy for us. That's my friend El Paso for you. In conversation with all his friends, he always bragged about, they too would tell you El Paso was a kind of man, very sincere, honest, genuine, stern, his view, he, in his viewpoint, he was true to his friendships. He was very committed to the things and the people he loved, even in ways that did not give you the, that impression. He was a devoted community activist and a father figure to many. He believed if he could not change the world, trying to change one person, community, or one family at a time, through his advice, sponsorship, or investment, would contribute to change the world. Step, uh, change the world. 
Sleep well, my friends. My friend, El Paso, I thank you. Thank you for that eulogy. Now I understand the meaning of El Paso. <laughs> and uh, listening to him, I recall when I, uh, the vehicle that I own, um, he bought one like that. And a few months afterwards, he was lecturing me on the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> that is El Paso for you. <laughs> At this time, we'll be rendered for special by Sister Avis. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters.
that we have to observe protocol and we ask that you do not hug or hold or be close or sit close to anyone. We have some seats over there, but must be about six feet. That coronavirus is not going to go away for a long time. So we do ask that you pay due attention and observe all protocols for our own safety. I recognize the presence of two ministers, government ministers, in the Babono area, my friend Ezekiel and uh, the other lady. Uh, let us give them a big hand, please. They are from the Babono area, and they are here to pay respect to a great man. I do not know how to preach. Perhaps this is the first time. I do not know what to say. I have things to say, but uh, I just am trying. Let us pray. Father, we ask you to be with us. We thank you for the life of Prevo, his family, his children touched them. Speak to us this afternoon, have a message of comfort for us that we too son some time ago Prevo has been very close to me Prevo told me that God made me his assignment that God told him to take care of me I'm not going to details. The man was not well, but he was always calling me, Pastor, how are you? I know secrets about him which I will not reveal because he told me everything apart from how much money he has in the bank. He didn't tell me that. I wish he would have told me so. I would say, hey, pray for release some on me. I cannot tell you all the secrets. What a man. I have met many doctors in bibliology as I travel and preach in many parts of the United States. I have met doctors of theology with a lot of degrees, large churches, thousands. I have preached in some of them, but I have never met a spiritual deep man who knows everything about the Bible like Prevo. I have never met one. I have told him he's better than all the big time preachers, including myself. And it's only pastor don't say that. That man was a deep man. How could I stand this afternoon and preach at his funeral? His son asked me to have the funeral service. Allow me this afternoon to express my sadness and condolences to the families 
the children, some of them I know very well. I do not know all. There are some overseas. You have lost a man. You have lost an advisor. You have lost someone who is concerned. You have lost somebody who wanted the very best for you. He told me his children are his life. And I believe him. The pain you are facing now is real. And you have reasons to be in pain. You have reasons to cry. Comfort and say, the Lord giveth. The Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He passed away at 65 years. I am 75. God works in mysterious ways. And he prayed for Emmanuel. Meda El Paso, you are here to pay your last respects to a giant. And the family would like to thank each one of you for showing out this afternoon to be here. In this COVID-19, that we could have eulogy from this man. Now he says he knows me. We have to get acquainted. And the other lady who I knew about her, we are glad. And the family want to thank you for turning out. But we have a message for you from God. A simple thing. What is death? And I thank God, you may disagree with me. I thank God for death. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more suffering. No more regret. He feels nothing. But I believe in the hands of the Almighty. His last conversation with me when I saw him at his home, he told me, Pastor, you don't have to beg God for forgiveness. Once you ask God to forgive you, he will forgive you because he died for you. You don't have to beg him. He makes that available to all of us. And I bring to us this afternoon, we must have a forgiving heart. And most of all, ask Jesus to forgive you and to wash away your sins. Because let me tell you, every one of us shall stand before God and give an account. And God knows all our secrets. Amen. I just want to bring you this afternoon a very short message. Because I could preach, I could preach, I could preach. And we have to lay our friend to his final resting place to bring to begin to close a closure at the death of this great man amen and i read from the book of hebrews chapter 9 from verse 27 and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, but unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. What is death? Doctors say, you die of this, you die of that. They say the breath, people stop breathing, life vanish away, the Bible says, you give up the ghost. Gone. The breath of life, gone. This morning, I was speaking to my grandchild. 
I asked her, she asked me why I dressed that way. I said, I'm going to a funeral. I asked her, do you know what a funeral is? Yes. Do you like funeral? Yes. Told me there is a casket. And what is in the casket? A body. And she had a ruler. And she dropped the ruler down. This is death. And the ruler remains flat. Cannot move. That's death. And regardless how big shot you are, regardless how small shot you are, regardless how rich you are, death knows no boundaries. That's the greatest equalizer. Every man, those that make riches their God, when we die, people are waiting to see what you leave for them. And some people want you to die before you die because they want to have what you have. Amen. When we die, everything finished, but we must stand before God. Death is a divine appointment to keep. The Bible tells us as it is appointed unto men once to die. I had to see the Cuban doctors from my eye, one of them. The COVID I had an appointment. Appointment canceled because of COVID. No more appointment. You have to wait. You can call your doctor or your lawyer, cancel the appointment, and they will do that flow. Mr. Death App accepts no cancellation. Mr. Death don't hear. Mr. Death don't care. Mr. Death have no sympathy. When the time comes, we cannot put that out. And it's a prize. I mean, in the midst of that pandemic, people are still angry. People don't talk to their husbands. They don't talk to their wives. They are angry. What are you angry for? Straighten your life now. That's the time we need to call upon God. Lord, have mercy on me. But we are angry. We vex. We don't talk to anybody. What are we doing to ourselves? And sometimes we die fast. Traps, your point like that. Death, I respect it. People say I love it. Not that I really love it, but like my friend, he has gone. I know this man believe in God. No more pain, no more sorrow. No more heartache, no more medicine, no more mutton yodi, no more tralala. Ah, resting in the bosom of Abraham. Amen? Amen. And I urge each one this afternoon to be sure that you confess all your sins, all your moving mess. Mm -hmm. What did I say? Mm -hmm. All our sins, there are some undercover nobody knows but you know. And God knows we are sinful beings, but thank God for Calvary. Jesus Christ will forgive you, regardless of whatever you have done. I don't need to know. Tell God and he will forgive you. Amen? Amen. And you will make yourself ready. Death is an appointment that we a divine appointment to keep and job say when my time come i must go nobody can stop it 
You can give your doctor all what you have. Your doctor, too, will face death. So the only thing we can do is the writing prepare. It's amazing we'll spend time to go to the embassy, to get a visa, to go to the States. You think you can go to heaven without the blood of Christ? Without preparation? Without turning to God and say, oh God, I thank you for giving me life. Now I need you and Jesus Christ has already paid the price to take you to paradise. Amen. So no man can change that time and the day and the hour. No, if no man. Death is also a divine judgment to meet. After you die, some people say there is no judgment. Don't believe that. There is God and there is the devil. There is heaven and there is hell. And the devil don't want you to go to paradise. He wants to drag you in hell with him. Now, you say there is no God? Do whatever you want. Live your life. Don't pray. Don't amend your ways. Just do whatever you want. Feel free like a bird. I am the master of my life. Nobody can stop me. Until you will be shocked. The Bible says there is a judgment to meet. First, death is a divine appointment to keep. Secondly, death is a divine judgment to meet. You shall meet that judgment. You know what it means? What you sow, what you reap. I cannot pray for you. No church can pray for you. No minister of religion can put any water or anything and pray for you once you die. We pray for you whilst you are alive. That's the time to prepare to meet your God because you must. And if you don't believe this, you'll be shocked. Judgment. But we thank Jesus that provision is made that all of us, the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world, we all know it, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus wants all of us to go to heaven. That's why he died upon the cross to save us from our sins, to give us life eternal. But you must say, Lord, I need you. Finally, death is a definite future to greet. There is an end, either heaven or hell, no other way. And this morning, this afternoon, I bring to you, many of us are here to pay our last respects to a giant, a man who did much, a man who was an advisor. Imagine he used to advise me. And as you all said, his son over there, let me see you. Yeah. He was never wrong. <laughs> I would never, act. I tried to argue with him. I said, pray for, this is how it is. He will not accept me as a preacher. He will not accept what I say. But he was biblical and he made his peace with God. Amen. Whilst he was at the hospital, he asked his son to call me because I had seen him the week at his home. I went to the hospital on Thursday. His son called me. His son told me, my father asked me to call you. I went. We spoke at length. There was another young man there too. We spoke at length. Saturday morning, very early. Pray for son, call me. El Paso is gone. Up to now, I cannot believe it. I am broken. 
that I know because of many, my many conversation with him and the depth of spirituality, he was prepared to take his journey. Amen. So I ask you, don't cry for me, Argentina. Wipe your tears. He has lived a good life and God has called him home. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more sickness. He is in a good place. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We now call upon the family to observe all protocol but come to the front that I pray for you. The families, please come, surround, observe all protocols, surround the casket. That's your last time. We will not open the casket here. That's your last time. Oh, all right, then after that we shall sing. We shall sing sweet by and by whilst they, whilst we, after the prayer, we invite the witnesses to go at the back so we, we can sign. Again, after that, we shall sing this song in the sweet by and by. I ask you to take a moment. I ask you to ponder your father, your friend, say a secret prayer, not for him, but for you. Ask God to give you the strength to endure. My brother, I think you need, you need, you need, you, you and your wife need to come over there because you are so strong. Come over, come over here. Come over on this side. We have room for you. We didn't want you to be too close, but that's a family. Come over there. I know Rosie, Rosie has been my friend for years and years and years, Rosie. I know you are devastated, but what can we do? God has called, God will give strength and grace. Father in heaven, this afternoon, I pray for the children and loved ones of Prevo Mandi, Emmanuel, Oh Lord, we ask that you strengthen the family. The eldest son who has lost much weight because of the passing away of his father, Lord be with him. We know he's broken. We know all the children are broken. And Lord, we are asking you to comfort everyone and Prevo himself would want them to know he's okay. Don't cry too much. You must cry, but God will wipe away your tears. And he wishes you wellness as you move on without him. He wishes you to make whatever adjustments to strengthen yourself and to strengthen the family. Oh God! Only you can comfort hearts. And I bring the family to you now. Give them courage. Give them comfort. I bring close friends of his. That Lord you will draw us close to you. And in you we shall survive. And we will get through this period of pain and loss. Have mercy upon us. Forgive our sins. I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. God be with you. Anybody? Sir? We ask can lead us in that song as we go at the back to sign the registry. Hello? 
Yes, okay. Let's do so. All right. The witnesses, please make your way other part. shall do the song entitled In the Sweet By and By. Stand, please. Could I please have the pole bearers and uh, the pole bearers? When we we shall sing the song entitled "We Shall Gather at the River," and the last stanza, Pastor Charles will descend and will make our exit. Shall we gather at the river? 
Okay, let's sing it for you, now. Shall we gather at the river where bright angel sweets have trod? Where face crystal tight forever flowing by the throne of God?
I got a picture of me on the And the road is all up your garage Mind to go. 